Welcome back to another episode of your Digital Hustle News. I'm Wade Teamer. We're taking a look at the charts today, guys. Yesterday was, yeah, I know. It's okay. We made it through. Everything's cooling down now. And even though most of the market is still red, there are still some top performers. One of them being Algorand. I wonder why. But as of this morning, 8.35 a.m., we are up 40 percent no news no headlines the only video out about what they did in el salvador seems to be mine and homie often did we pump algorithm i'm not taking credit for that but <laughs> as you can see guys all the technicals look great right now last night we bounced off that red line and went to the moon just straight skyrocket you can see this is the daily candle all of this occurred overnight, guys, and this is beautiful. Now, another thing I want to point out here, because we're going to learn these Bollinger Bands together. We're going to learn these indicators together. But you can see we got contraction, springboard. We got contraction, springboard, sharp contraction right here, sent us straight up. So as we're learning, as this is how I learned to read these charts, guys, just getting into it every day. Uh, noticing patterns, uh, just going through different events. This is, this would be fourth. No, well, no, because there's been more than four corrections for Bitcoin just this year alone. This would probably, well, well, when I say crash, this was probably my fourth crash witnessing, like live witnessing uh, since 20, I want to say 19, since 2019. So I was there for the March 2021 that if you weren't in crypto in March of 2020, it's okay. <laughs> it's a good thing because that that was that was dangerous. And I was trading then. But anyway, guys, looking at another top performer, Tron recovering exceptionally well, up 12% right now. That came all the way down to seven cents, I believe. Yeah. Yep, I saw Tron at seven cents last night. I was kind of scared, not going to lie. But we recovered quite substantially. Now, just in case you're curious, this is a stock, one of the few stocks that I do hold. But it's Helion Holdings. They're electric vehicle, future technology, uh, transportation, semi-trucks, all that good stuff. It's pretty prominent technology, but they're recovering too. Kind of uh, illustration of what's going on in stocks. But Litecoin also looking good getting ready to recover we've had a nice little bounce off that bottom line as you can see a little bit of contraction forming definitely right here this being the daily this contraction here around the first and the second is what's going to keep litecoin's momentum uh pushing forward now looking at the weekly got some small contraction here but we were rejected at that 58 level you see here where the uh, red line is we were rejected hard but i think a lot of that had to do with what happened to bitcoin but the weekly it's going to be up and down but today we should definitely be looking to recover uh, another one of our new projects guys nft nft there was some discussion on twitter i was talking on twitter with a couple gentlemen last night and one of them said that had Bitcoin had not corrected yesterday, NFT would have reached new all-time highs because that was the that contest, this airdrop, this uh, uh, event with Binance is ongoing. It's going to be ongoing for the next 60 days. So I expect NFT to do exceptionally well until this event is over. And then you can see by the technicals, we haven't had any contraction yet. This was during the release here. August 28th, 27th through the 31st. That was the you know introduction of NFT into the market. And you can see the contraction here. We shot up. But what I feel comfortable when I see is we bounced off of this RSI here. And that looks a lot like what Algorand did. Bam, straight to the moon. So with NFT being the type of project, it's it has a lot of supply. It's a lot of tokens, okay? Um, but it has a stronger use case 
than a lot of the projects with an excess amount of tokens. So really looking forward to what NFT is going to do for us, guys. Uh, IOTA also looking strong. The Central Land looking strong. Verge making a comeback. Render. Render is a project that has not been phased through <laughs> this entire market run, like this current phase right now. Render has substan it stayed above a dollar after it rallied above a dollar from 65 cents to well over a dollar. And I think that had a lot to do with the Gene Roddenberry uh, NFT project that they came out with. They got the entire Star Trek universe digitized. They have the rights, the licensing, it's theirs. <laughs> okay, so Render adopted Star Trek. Now you see the power of the use case. But CRO, another project doing well. Let's take a look at Digibyte, guys. You know, that's the team right there. We are, you see the contraction there forming. And you can see the contraction forming here at the bottom. This is the daily. So this is looking good. This is looking good for Digibyte. I can definitely expect to recover close to that nine cent range we were making our way I, I, we were really making our way to 10 cent it was i was wholly expecting to see a 10 cent digibyte before the end of this week we were heading in that direction as you can see there let's take a look at the weekly okay the weekly is not looking too positive it's not looking too positive however there is still a potential for things to go the other way okay because this four cent level three to four cent level to me looks like a support level. I don't see us going back down to three, four cents ever again, unless Bitcoin decides to go south again. There's some more fear in the market, another maybe potential price manipulation. But provided that none of that happens, I'm still positive on Digibyte. Now, the rest of the market, they're still down, but I can tell you by these percentages. Let's take a look at B chain. Yeah, that's just that's from the pull down on the rest of the market. Tezos back down to four dollars thirty. Wow, that's deep. Theta. This theta has an interesting story over the last seventy two hours. Okay, running all the way up to. Let's see where we are. This is the weekly. Take a look at the daily. Yeah, almost up to ten dollars, stopping at about nine dollars and sixty cent. Then Bitcoin Day took all those gains, took all those gains, man. So Theta, Theta is definitely still in a position to bounce back, though, because Theta has a lot of strong. It's a strong project, very strong ecosystem. They are essentially the next version of YouTube, decentralized YouTube. OK, Theta TV, I'm working on how to get on Theta TV as well. So be sure be looking out for that in the future. But yeah, guys, the rest of the markets are just in aftershock if you will okay let me take a look at uniswap i let you guys know in the ball video last night that i had got into uniswap i am really bullish on uniswap i don't know why when it came out all the excitement was there decentralized exchange platform swaps all of this good stuff but i didn't fall into the hype in the beginning i waited i said the project has potential I can see the potential, but there's too much hysteria around Uniswap. When SEC went after them, I was like, that's perfect. That is the perfect time to get into Uniswap. So looking at the technicals, we got some contraction forming on both charts, top and bottom. That's a double confirmation. This uh, purple line here, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. As you can see the pattern, we go down, we touch it, we go the other way. We get too excited, pulls us back down, so forth and so on. We are now down. So the only natural course of action is to repeat the cycle, retrograde it, if you will. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but go the other way. OK, the fact that this is so far down here only indicates to me that there's going to be some one price recovery. So we can expect Uniswap to at least get back up to thirty dollars within a week, maybe two, and then psh, parabolic, 45, $60 Uniswap, especially if we start to get into, if uh, Bitcoin begins to recover towards the end of September. So uh, Ego, since that just popped up, let's take a look at that real quick. I do have some news for you, just real few headlines. 
One of them is quite funny. Uh, McDonald's now accepts Bitcoin. Only in El Salvador. But El Eagle, let's take a look at Eat Gold. Much of the same situation here, especially on the daily, guys. We got the contraction going. Uh, contraction here for the for E Gold started on the 28th to 29th. So yeah, got the setup going. We touch this median red line here at around this is a support level around one. We're actually sitting on support right now. 150, 148 to 150, it looks like. So there's a potential to bounce off of that, provided decent market conditions. We can maintain that momentum and Elron can continue its push to $200. So, but um, yeah, this is Senso. Solana, Solana's rally. I told you guys, <laughs> I told you guys that momentum got halted. But one thing that you can see here though, we're getting ready to touch this red line level. There's a potential, another potential for one more bounce, maybe up to 183, 190. And then it's definitely going to settle down. I don't see a crash coming for Solana. The tech, uh, the fundamentals are too strong, too many, too much money behind it. But the market dynamics basically are telling me that it's time for Solana to calm down. But let's take a look at some headlines, guys. Bitcoin accepted in Starbucks, McDonald's, and everywhere in El Salvador. <laughs> okay, I just thought this was funny. Funny little headline. Citizens of El Salvador can now purchase anything. And as a matter of fact, let me pull up my Twitter because I can just show you this video. I retweeted this as a matter of fact. So, yeah. Let's check this out. This is what the future of retail is going to look like. That's why you notice I've kind of redesigned my channel when it comes to the sections and playlists. Painting the vivid picture. And just like that. Just like that, guys. It's what the future of uh, commerce is going to look like. If you're not following me on Twitter, feel free to give me a follow. I'm very social. But another headline, the SEC is going after Coinbase. Coinbase faces SEC lawsuit over cryptocurrency lending platform. Let's get into some details of this because this is kind of deep, guys. That guy is hugging a seal. I love humans. Anyway, Securities and Exchange Commission has threatened to sue cryptocurrency platform Coinbase. According to the company, a post on Coinbase's blog says the SEC has issued the company with a Wells notice, a met message of intent to sue in court. This blog post written by Coinbase chief legal officer Paul Grewal states that the warning was issued over the platform's proposed lend program and would allow cryptocurrency owners to lend them in return for interest. According to Reuters, some of the U.S. states have raised concerns about such programs, arguing that they should comply with existing securities laws. It added that New Jersey had issued an order in July telling cryptocurrency platform BlockFi to stop offering interest bearing accounts. That has raised $14.7 billion from investors. Coinbase said it had contacted the SEC over Lend, and the company believed it did not fall under these security laws. In a tweet linking to the blog post, Coinbase said, after months of trying to engage with the SEC on our plan Coinbase Lend, we recently received the notice that it intends to pursue legal action against us. So this is not at all surprising. Kind of surprising that it was Coinbase, but this is what Gary said. This is what the SEC said. It's kind of what I told you. <laughs> what did they call them? Lending platforms and trading platforms. Okay. DeFi exchanges and your wallets. They have to regulate. It's too much money going through these platforms. Now, another article for you guys, some global news. Former RBI governor to advocate for India to endorse the crypto industry. Now, reason why I am driving 
your focus towards India is because India is one of those emerging markets. There are a lot of people there. The majority of them are under 35, the working class people, the, 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 the ones, the members of the economy that drive the economic engine, okay? The ones that are owning the businesses, starting new businesses in school, you know, purchasing homes, renting, things like that. That age group is mostly young. So their thinking is towards the future, okay? But it says the former governor of RBI urges the Indian government to accept crypto. Rama Gandhi pushes for the adoption of regulation and um, pushes for adoption and regulation of crypto. A central bank digital currency may be launched this year. It says that India is undoubtedly one of the biggest markets for crypto. The impending issue on the clarity of the government's stance on crypto has been made it a daily debatable topic for Indian locals and officials. It is therefore not surprising that many opinions, disclosures, also questions will be formed during this period. Former governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Rama Sub Ramayan Gandhi said that cryptocurrency should be considered an asset or a commodity and then taxed accordingly. Speaking at the inaugural HODL 21 virtual conference organized by the Blockchain and Crypto Assets Council of Internet and Mobile Association of India on September 7th, Rama said that the government should have an open mind towards transactions involving crypto. Now, all within the last 24 hours, guys, I will say that there have been a couple more nations that have got involved. Portugal is looking to legalize, make it a uh, legal tender. Brazil, Ecuador, and now we're seeing India getting into the fold. So all of this just propose a question, guys, and I'll leave you with this. Let's say Bitcoin does reach 100K by the end of the year. How much does that make a Satoshi worth? Because you'll notice in that clip that I showed you, their menu items were listed with Satoshi values. Just keep that in mind right there, okay? If a Bitcoin is worth 100K, how much is each Satoshi worth? And at what point that Bitcoin, what price does Bitcoin need to be in order for a Satoshi to equal a penny maybe, even a nickel, something like that? Or at what point does Bitcoin have to be in order for the Satoshis to be used as currency? Okay, it's an interesting concept. If you get to the end of this video and you vibe with it, get of course, get at me on Twitter, get down in the comments. Let's talk this out because I believe what we're seeing with this El Salvador situation, with Algorand up 40% because El Salvador is building their payment system on Algorand. We're seeing a future of something forming, guys. So that is why I create this channel. That's why I love tuning in to you guys' channels. I'm really looking forward to, you know, collaborating with you guys really soon. We all share a global picture of global adoption. And it's beautiful because we're going to be okay. But with all that being said, guys, if you found value in this video, make sure you hit that like button and, of course, subscribe so that way you never miss an update on global crypto adoption with a global perspective. Of course, you can get in contact with me directly on Twitter or the links down in the description. They're there for your convenience. But with all that being said, guys, have a great day. Have a prosperous day. And most importantly, make that money out. And I'll see y'all in the next one. I can't dance.